welcome to worship today. Come on, if you'd like to stand, we're gonna sing together. A big welcome to those that are joining us online. Let's worship our King today. Hey, the Bible says, let's enter His gates with thanksgiving and His courts with praise. Let's do that today as we worship. Let's praise, let's lift the name of Jesus in this place.
we serve a victorious God, amen. For wherever we find ourselves in any season of life, our God reigns and rules, He's in control. The God that we serve, let's sing to Him today. Let's worship with all we have. Let's engage with a living and loving God, amen. The weapon may be formed. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Because the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. Let's sing that out. Let's declare. Oh, my God will never fail. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle. turned it for good you turned it for good when you sing that out you take what the enemy meant for you and you turn it's your promise oh God you the goodness of our God come on together let's sing you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good you turn
Oh Lord, we worship you this morning. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you work it for good. We bless your name because you are the one that brings victory. We love you, King Jesus. Amen. We're going to have a time of communion now. So if you're here in the building, if you want to have a seat and maybe grab the bread and juice that you have with you. If for some reason you didn't get some bread and juice on the way in, please pop your hand up nice and high and our team will come to you right now. And for those online at home, if you want to grab some bread and juice, because no matter where we are, we can come and worship our King and and celebrate communion together this this night, today and, and this time. Well, it's fair to say that we're in a pretty big time of change, yeah? Things are constantly changing and just when we feel like there's a new normal, something else happens. And in a time of constant change, we can find ourselves feeling anxious, feeling afraid, maybe feeling frustrated and angry. And I know I've been finding the sense of who or what do I hang on to in this time of change. And I keep coming back to the fact that Jesus is our constant. Jesus is the one that we can hold on to no matter what is going on around us. I want to remind us today of this verse in Hebrews 13. It says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. He is our constant. He is the one we can hold on to when everything around us feels like it's changing. Jesus is still King. Jesus has still defeated sin and death. Jesus is still alive. Jesus is still forgiving and restoring and healing us. Jesus is King. And so as we take communion and we have the bread, and we remember His body broken for us. And we have the juice, we remember His blood poured out for us. What we celebrate with communion, what we remember is still true today. It hasn't changed. There's power in the forgiveness of the cross. And Jesus Himself said to His disciples in the last supper, Supper, do this to remember me. Today we get to remember who Jesus is and what he has done for us. And that hasn't changed. That stays the same. So I want to encourage us now to take the bread in our own time. Hold the juice. We're going to drink together. But as you take the bread, thank King Jesus. He's still on the throne. That he is constant and with us. And maybe ask as you take the bread that you would know afresh his power, his unchanging presence in your life. We worship a king who is on the throne. As we drink, let's remember that he is risen. He is alive and he is with us. King Jesus, we thank you. We thank you as we remember you today, what you did on that cross, that the power that you are, the risen king, is true today. That in this world where we may be are uncertain and unsure, we can be sure of you. We can have hope in you. We can hold on to the one who is victorious, who is unchanging, who is life-giving, who is our Lord and Saviour. And so King Jesus, we continue to worship you. Here at home, online, wherever we are today, we worship you. You are King. And you welcome us home. We don't have to be afraid or live in fear of the circumstances today, but we find peace and hope in you. And we thank you and we bless you, Jesus. Let's stand and continue to worship our King. Jesus, thank you. We are fearfully and wonderfully made, the Bible says. We are fearfully and wonderfully made by you to worship you. That's what we desire to do today, God, to give you all that we are. Every melody of the tongue of our and our lips, let it praise you today. As we sing, for we are yours. 
child of the king. chosen me
last time. Let's sing it out together. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Oh Lord, we worship you today. Thank you that we don't have to be held by fear or anxiety, but you bring freedom in Jesus' name. You bring breakthrough and you call us your child. Thank you that you're our Father, God, that you embrace us and welcome us home. Just this sense today that God wants to remind each one that He sees you. He notices you. You are valued. You are someone of worth. That God sees you today, right now where you are, and says, I love you. You're my child. And maybe there's some that need to hear that afresh today. You are His child. He loves and adores you. God, thank you that you are for us, that you are with us, that you are the one through everything we can hold on to you. And even if we are just hanging in there, you are enough. You are good and faithful and love and embrace us. Thank you that we are your children. Thank you that each one of us, no matter who we are, no matter what we are feeling today, we can stand and declare and say, I am your child. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your love, your presence. We bless you and worship you today. And we're so grateful that you are with us. Thank you, God. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, well, welcome to church. If you're physically in the building, have a seat online. You can have a seat too. Great to be together. If you are new here today, today's your first time. We are so glad that you've chosen to be here with us. And if you're here in the building after the service, head out and to the left to the point where you can connect with someone who would uh, love to know a bit more about you and tell you a bit more about us. Online in the chat right now, there's a connect button. And so if you are new today, please hit that because we'd love to find out ways to connect with you and let you know more about us. But the place to go for all of us is clovey.com.au. Head to our website if there are things you want to know about what's happening here at Clovey. Well, we're a bit excited as part of family, some family news, and there's a few babies that have popped up during COVID. How exciting. And we had one newbie, a very new baby, who was born on the 2nd of July. Simon and Christy Bubner welcomed into the world a little girl called Parker Alice Bubner. Let's put our hands together. Welcome this beautiful new baby. Now, stats are important. She is 2.44 kilos and 47 centimetres in length, so a little bundle of joy. And we are so excited for Simon and Christy. Wish them all the best and want to bless them and pray for sleep and joy for them as a family. Well, as part of family, we have been celebrating our birthday a few weeks ago. And we're not newborns like little Parker. We are 53 years old. Come on, that's us. We're all 53. Yeah, come on. Some of us, that's good. Some of us, I just aged like 10 years like that. Ouch. Anyway, as part of our anniversary, we've been giving to Heart for the House, our annual anniversary offering where we get to sow into what God is doing here in our church, in the neighbourhood and in the world. And I am so absolutely thrilled to say that we have given as a church $145,538. Come on, how incredible is God? Can I say a massive thank you to all of our church for your generosity, for giving and blessing. And I'm really excited. Like That's an incredible figure in this season to see what God's going to do with that. Here, church, physically, online, other churches and across the globe as we invest into what God is doing. But I'm also really excited for us. When I think about our church, that we are that generous, I'm excited about what God's going to do in and through us as we have a heart that postures to give to our God. And I'm excited that He wants to use us. So absolute celebration and a real thankfulness that goes out to say thank you for everyone that gave. Another thing we can do at the moment in terms of giving, as you would have walked in and those at home maybe noticed, it's freezing at the moment, yeah? It is cold. And we get to give to those that are sleeping rough. So on July 26, we have our blanket appeal. If you have blankets or jackets, anything you have that you can come and give on July 26, all our three services that day, please be bringing those and we'll bless and donate them to those that are sleeping rough in our city. 
Now, some of you may know a lot about Jesus. Others, you might have a lot of questions. Maybe you've started connecting to church and and God in this season that we're in right now. And if that's you and you've still got a bunch of questions or you'd like to know more, the best place to go is an Alpha course. And we have an online Alpha course starting on July the 23rd. It's a great space to connect and understand more and grow in your faith. And it's all online, which makes it really easy. Now, you might also have friends or family that have questions and are wanting to know more, then invite them to this. You simply go to clovey.com.au forward slash next steps to find out more. But the beauty of it being online is you could be anywhere in the world right now and still connect to Alpha Online and find out more about Jesus. So I'd encourage you to investigate that. As part of Clovey, we continue in our discipleship and worship of King Jesus to give our weekly tithes and offerings. And so we have three ways to give. If you go to clovey.com.au forward slash give, there's more details there. But we want to bless and worship our King that we've just been singing about and celebrating and do that through every part of us, which includes our finances. We love that God is at work. He doesn't stop working. He's always at work. And one of the great ways that we want to celebrate today that he's at work is actually through our worship and creative arts pastor, Luke Ingalls. Now, Luke, apart from doing a wonderful job of leading and pastoring and actually got us through a service, I just need to let you know at the 9 a.m., we had an entire power outage in everything. The whole area went down. And Luke and Mike just continued on in darkness. So we are really blessed. And you guys are really blessed right now because we've got power. How good is that? So online, if you jumped on now and you crashed at nine, welcome back. (laughs) So great to have you. But these guys pushed through the power outage. But God is at work. That's what I was saying. And our Pastor Luke has just released a brand new single. He's a singer-songwriter and has released a song that he has written. We're going to have a video clip in that song to see in a minute. But... It's a beautiful song that I really believe God wants to use to minister to us. This song is called Take My Hand, and Luke wrote this in a time when things were tough, when he was really holding on to hope and holding on to God. And he talks about the fact that when we are faced with dark, hard, difficult, challenging times, we could listen to the voices, the people and the voices in our head that say, you're not good enough, you can't make it, it's not going to turn out. Or we can actually be brave and bold enough to be vulnerable and to say, I need help, and to reach out to others and to God and hold on to hope. And this song is grounded in the scripture, Isaiah 41.10, that says, I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. Our God will strengthen us. He will hold us through everything. So I want to encourage you to turn your attention to the screens, but reflect and ask the Lord to minister to you through this song that we can take his hand in all circumstances. He tried to push me down. Treat me this way She tried to shut me out Of life's mysteries Treasure sinking in the deep Those thoughts keep overpowering
Yeah, so good. So good. We want to uh, congratulate you, Luke, on that. And uh, we uh, just want to honour you as well, just uh, as a musician and a worship leader and as our pastor. And uh, Luke's put a little uh, package together uh, for those in the room, uh, three CDs for $20 if you want to get around him and support him, uh, but online as well. Uh, you just go to any uh, music distribution place, wherever you get your music from, that's where Luke will be. And you can search him and you can find it there. Well, how are you going, everyone? You good? Yeah, fantastic. Welcome back. I know for some, it's your first time uh, in the room uh, today. And welcome to everyone, Clovey Online. And if you've, joined, if you've rejoined us from nine, uh, then welcome uh, again. It's great to have you with us. So I hope you're going well. I want to set the scene for you. It's the late 1970s, the early 1980s. We're in the old building at Clovercrest over on Montague Road. And it's a members meeting. And the members have been given four things to consider. The four things that the members were considering and prayerfully uh, wondering about moving ahead on were the following. The first one was to lay some bitumen on the car park. It just needed, it needed to happen, just something that had to happen. The second was the church was experiencing some growing pains and there was talk of bringing a second pastor on. The third was adding a second service because of these growing pains. And the fourth was purchasing the hall across the road for an investment into the next generation and discipleship. So in this meeting, there was a conversation that was happening. Which one of these things should we do and why? And the conversation went around and it went around and it went around. And then a man stood up and his name was Bruce Buzzenshot. What a cool name. And Bruce stood up and he said, do you know what? I think we need to do all four. We need to step out in faith and we need to do all four. And from what I've been told, about a minute later, it was seconded and then all the hands went up and then the church moved ahead. All four brought on a second pastor. His name was John Lunay, served the church for a number of years, added a second service, laid the bitumen and purchased the hall across the road. And the church moved into its next season. In many ways, Clovey dared to dream. And with Bruce and the, the, the team that were around at that stage and the members, they just moved ahead into all that God had for the next season of Clovey. And it's inspiring when you think about it, that God placed in them a desire and a heart that actually the future is more blessed than the past and that they would dare to dream and that they would move forward into all that God had for them. For many of them, it might not have made sense, but they moved forward in faith and with a vision of faith, trusting God and moving ahead. And the church went on and continued to flourish under the hand and the leading of God. My question is, we're in this series, Dare to Dream, is what is the kingdom dream that God is brewing in your life? What is it? What's the kingdom dream as we're sitting in this Dare to Dream series? What is it that he's bringing up for you? Or what is it that he's bringing up for uh, our church? What is he bringing up for the future, living under his hand and under his rule and under his reign? Because one thing I know for sure is that God is at work. He's at work. 
See, this beautiful thing is that we are actually invited by God to be involved in His work. It's called the Missio Dei, the mission of God. Actually, part of who God is, is that He's on mission and He draws us into this conversation. And we form a partnership with God as we give our life to Him, but it's at His initiative. It's who God is. And this is why I've got full trust and confidence to know that God is at work. He's working in your life and he's working in my life. He's working in our church as he's drawing us to more of what he has for us. Because it's part of his character. It's part of his nature. Actually, just last week, our kids ministry, Clovey Kids, gave an opportunity for kids who hadn't put their trust in Jesus to put their trust in him for the first time. And 10 kids put their trust in Jesus for the first time. Isn't that awesome? (laughs) Praise God. Praise God. Why? Well, God's at work. He's drawing people to himself, the little ones, all the way through to the old ones. He's drawing them to himself. The question is, do we have the courage to step it out? Are we brave enough? Do we have the courage to step it out? Because I know God's at work in your life, placing dreams and and things into your heart and into your mind for the future. I know that during this COVID season as well, God's been drawing people that maybe haven't been part of your world back into your world. And I know many have had opportunities to share their faith and and share how their relationship with Jesus and Jesus as an anchor in your life has been so helpful during these tricky times. I also know that God's been bringing healing and really difficult season for many where God's been bringing healing and restoration into your life. See, God is a God who's at work. The question is, will we have the courage to step it out? Will we have the courage? Are we brave enough to step into the things that God has for us? And today I want us to look at this whole idea of courage leading to obedience. Courage leading to obedience. And I want to wrap it around the story of Joshua. And Joshua was a man of God, one of the early leaders in God's people. You might have heard of him. You might know his story well. You might not know much about him. And we find Joshua really at the beginning of God's story. And he takes over the leadership of the Israelites from a man called Moses. And Moses was this you know, really strong leader and, and had this incredible impact. And Joshua comes in after him. In some ways, it's sort of a bit like, I don't know, like coming in after Steve Jobs at Apple. Like, tough gig, right? You know, Steve Jobs is, you know, he did a, you know, he had his ups and his downs, but he created a bit of technology that many of you are holding in your hand right now. And that's kind of his legacy and his impact. And Moses had this incredible impact on God's people. And Joshua comes in after him. But Joshua has a real call on his life. And God speaks some powerful words into his life early on in his ministry. And if you've got your Bibles or your phones, let's turn to Joshua 1. I'm going to read verses 6 to 9. It says this, Be strong and courageous, because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn it to it from the right or to the left, so that you may be successful wherever you go. Verse 8. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. In verse 9, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So what do you think Joshua needed to be? Well, he needed to be strong, didn't he? And he needed to be courageous. Three times here, God speaks to him and says, be strong and be courageous. And then in verse 8, he he encourages him to be a man who gets into God's word and then lives it out. And in verse 9, knowing that God is with him wherever he goes. And theologian Robert Hubbard, he says these words. He says, to be strong and courageous means to be steady, resolute, bold and unafraid. You know, as followers of Jesus, as as disciples, as people who chase after the things of God, it's so very important to know that our foundation for courage comes from an obedience in the Bible. Our foundation for courage comes from an obedience to the Bible. 
In verse 7 and 8, I'll read it again. He, he says this, Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you, and do not turn from it to the right or to the left, so that you may be successful wherever you go. And keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. This is incredible, what Joshua is called to do in this moment in terms of being a man of the word. It's really interesting here. He's called to obey the law of Moses. Don't turn from the right or to the left. He's called to walk straight. Walk straight in knowing God through his word. And then keep the book of the law on his lips. Uh, to meditate on the law. Uh, and this word meditate means to uh, audibly murmur. So just to keep it going. Keep it going as the day goes on. And not just uh, audibly murmur on it, but also the day and the night. So he's being called here to be a man of the word that walks straight in the ways of God, understands the word of God, audibly murmurs on it day and night. So this is an all of the time experience for Joshua. He's being asked to be someone who consumes the word of God and lets it be part of all that he is. It's really important that we understand that. And then we will know that God is with us. And then we position ourselves to be prosperous and successful in the eyes of God. So I guess my question to us is how is our engagement in the Word of God going? Are we women and men of the Word? Because to be strong and courageous, to dare to dream, to live the lives that God has for us starts with a foundation piece of being people of the Word. That's where it starts. So very important. And you might be exploring faith, or you might be following uh, Jesus for many, many decades. But how's your love for the Word of God? Is it something that you consume? Is it something that you don't go from the right to the left? Is it something that you, you know, audibly murmur, you meditate on? It's something that is in the day and in the night. It's an incredible challenge. Because if we're going to be people of courage, then that is our foundation piece. And if you're wondering, well, Mike, how can I continue to be that type of person? Well, we've started to do weekday devotions. And we've been doing weekday devotions for some time. But this, at this very moment in time, we're doing those through our Dare to Dream series. So you can like our socials on Facebook um, and you can, you can check us out from that perspective. And it, I know for many people, it's been a good rhythm for you. You know that there's a daily weekday devotion coming and it's been really helpful. And with the Bible as our foundation, what this actually does is it, it grows an inner strength in us. Because sometimes when you think about maybe I need to be strong or I need to be courageous, you might be thinking of kind of that exterior, that outside. What does that mean or what does that look like for me in my life? But no, actually, there's an inner strength. There's, there's a resilience. There's, there's um, an attractiveness to you as a person that comes when you're in the Word of God. There's a grace that you hold and there's something that people want to know about. It's not, we're not talking about a strength and a courage where we're saying, hey, you know what, just go get a gym membership and everything's going to be okay. We're not talking about that. We're talking about cultivating the inner life and it starts with a foundation piece in the Word. And courage develops grit. It develops resilience and a faith cultivated under fire. And we can live with courage and we can dare to dream because we know God is with us. Because the more we understand God, the more we're in His Word, the more we build on that relationship, the more we do genuinely know He's with us wherever we go. And we've been through some tricky seasons in this last little while. And we're not out of them yet. But we can know that despite all these circumstances, all the things that we've been going through, God is with us. And we can have the courage to dare to dream. We can move by faith into the new things that God has for us because we know at our core, God's with us. So very important for us to understand this. So my question is, do you live in this knowledge? Do you experience this freedom? Some of you might know that I've started my doctor of ministry uh, this year. I was actually meant to be in Texas a couple of weeks ago, not in Texas. Praise God that the Bible College uh, changed how they teach and it all happened over Zoom. Now, it was a lot of Zoom. 
all right? But I'm so grateful that we could get this thing started. And uh, it's called the Opening Residency. And so for two weeks, I was on Zoom, three-hour lectures, a couple of them a day. And I was learning all uh, about uh, missional renewal. And that's going to be the focus of my thesis. going to be looking at how, to, how does a church in the suburbs, say a church that's, you know, around 50 years old, that's had a great faith legacy, how does it grow into its next season? Because, you know, there are many, many churches uh, that uh, are in the suburbs of Australia, post-World War II, post-Billy Graham, as um, the suburbs grew in each capital city. And there's some big questions at the moment that churches have around how they how they're going to be renewed under the hand and the leading of God. And I'm going to be digging around in that space for the next three years. So it's going to be a bit of a journey. So you're going to hear bits and pieces about that as we go on. But I want to bring one little bit of research that the Abilene Christian University, ACU, who I'm doing my study with, uh, that they've been working on in their research institute around uh, what does a flourishing church look like in 10 years' time? And they've started to, to map and track this a little bit. And they've come up with a few things. And I want to share them today because when I think about Clovey daring to dream, when I think about our future, when I think about having courage and stepping forward, some of these things I think speak right into this. So this is what some of the research would say around a flourishing church in 10 years time. The first one is that there is intentional relational evangelism. People are really intentional in churches about not just coming on a Sunday, ticking a box, but actually being really intentional in how they share their faith with their family and their friends and the people that God has brought into their world. The second one is that there's well-respected, the churches that will flourish into the future are well-respected in their local, local community and they have strong networks. So really kind of relational churches that reach out and we do that so well over at Pathway, but then also they're connected with a number of other churches in their area as well. The third thing is that attendance will not drive engagement, but instead engagement will drive attendance. And this is a really significant one because in the past, churches might have been measured by how many people are in the room. But you could be sitting in the room and actually be completely disengaged. You might have just been ticking a box and saying, yeah, I was in church. Yeah, it happened. But not actually engaged in God or in the mission of God or in the vision of the church. Uh, that's attendance. Actually, engagement's going to be a much higher church health indicator into the future. And if you're engaged with God, what he's doing in your life, what he's doing in the local church, what he's doing in the world, and choose to participate and partner with him in that, then you actually want to be at church because you want to be worshipping with God's people. Uh, you'll have a desire to be connected with the body of Christ, and that will be a part of your spiritual disciplines and formation. So engagement is actually really key uh, to a flourishing church. Uh, the fourth one here is multi-site churches with smaller worship gatherings. Into the future, churches will be uh, more like the space that we're in now, more intimate gatherings and more of them. And that's going to be a part of uh, the future, as is life groups. Life groups will be a key to community. And the last piece here is corporate prayer will be at the centre of the church's life. So each of these elements when we start talking about evangelism or being respected, enriching the local community, engagement, multi-site, life groups, prayer. These are the elements that I see part of our future at Clovey, continuing to grow in these things that are already part of who we are. But for us to get there, it's going to take courage because we'll say goodbye to some things that we really loved in the past and we'll step forward into the future, into the new things that God has for us. And it's so important that we're in it together. It's so important that we can have a, a discussion about where God's leading us as a church family. And this week, you would have got a, a message either through my comms on Monday night or uh, an email that went out and asked you to participate in a survey. And you can go to clovey.com.au forward slash survey. And I want to ask you please to participate in this because we want to engage together in what is God saying and how can we be courageous in stepping forward into all that God has for us. It's so important that we can do this uh, together. Well, let's get back to Joshua. So Joshua and the Israelites, they had this amazing journey as they entered the land that God had for them. You know, they were landless for nearly 500 years. And uh, what happens in the arc of uh, the book of Joshua is the first 12 chapters are really when they come in, they take this land. And, and then chapters 13 to 22, they're distributing the land amongst the 12 tribes. And then the last two chapters uh, of Joshua, they have this um, covenantal pledge with God's people between God and they worship God. And then Joshua sort of speaks 
he speaks and he says some things to uh, the people. And I just want to look at what he says here in Joshua 24. You see, Joshua lived a, a really full, rewarding life. Uh, he was a man of faith. He really lived that strength and that courage that God spoke to him about in chapter 1. And in chapter 24, he says this. He says, Now fear the Lord and serve Him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worshipped before the Euphrates River and in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourself this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Wow. Wow. This is what Joshua gave to his people. We gave him this, this encouragement. And there's three little things in here that I want us to just to look at as I kind of bring things together and wrap it up around us being a people who are courageous and living for the things of God and daring to dream. And the first one is around fearing the Lord. Joshua calls the people to fear the Lord. And this word fear means to revere to revere the Lord, to place Him above all other things. And being a people who love the Word, and that being our foundation for courage. Secondly, coming into that is fearing the Lord. Being a people who say, you know what, Lord, you're my number one. You're my number one. You're the one who I want to please the most. That's what's of most importance to me. How's that going in your life? Would you say that right now you fear the Lord? Is that a reality for you? The second thing he talks about is throwing away the gods of our ancestors. I'm going to call them the little G gods. What are the little G gods that kind of get into us? And they do for all of us. It might be like a God of security, being secure in your relationships. It might be a God of self-sufficiency and saying, you know what? I've got this. I'm just going to, you know, make sure that I got myself into this problem. I'm going to make sure I get myself out of it. It might even be the God of control. I think COVID probably for many people has said, you know what? Who's really in control? And in the West, we love being in control, don't we? We love manufacturing it and piecing it all together. Well, maybe today we need to say, sorry, God, we're not actually in control. You're the one who's in control. I actually need to throw away that little G God. But we've all got these things in our life. They corrupt us and they don't allow us to live this abundant life that Jesus died on the cross for us because we kind of jump in there. They're our little G-gods. They're in you, they're in me. Today, do you need to get rid of one or more of those and say, actually, I'm going to throw away those things. And then thirdly, he talks about choosing to serve the Lord. And this is how Joshua lived. He was a man of faith and he chose day in, day out to serve the Lord. It was his reality. And he just didn't get teleported into uh, being this man of God. He lived out his calling one step, one day at a time. And this is the encouragement for us today as we consider what it means to be a people who dare to dream. As we're a people who dare to dream, will we have the courage that Joshua had? Will we take his life as an example and say, all right, Lord, we want to have the Bible as a foundation piece for our lives. We want to fear you, Lord. We want to revere you, put you number one. We want to throw away all these things that get in the way and we want to make a choice to serve you and put a hand on our heart and we say, as for me and my household, we will choose to serve the Lord. Because if we posture ourselves in this way, then we are really opening ourselves up to all the things that God has for us. And it's a beautiful thing. There's one man who's in the history of the South Australian Baptists, and his name's George Fife Angus. You might know Angus Street, or you might have heard of Anguston. And he was a big player early on with the Baptists. And he was an incredible guy. He had a vision for South Australia. He had a vision for South Australia that it would be the diffusion, it would be the centrepiece for the diffusion of the gospel into the Southern Hemisphere. I talk about dreaming big in the 1800s, right? And he was pro-education for all, which was pretty scandalous at his time. He was against slavery. He was for mission. And he put his money where his mouth was. He was so generous in being a kingdom investor. And we kind of 
can look back and hear these stories. And we actually have the opportunity now to look at the future. And we stand on the shoulders of people like Angus. We stand on the shoulders of people like Buzz and Shot. And we actually now have an opportunity to write the future. And what is before us is an invitation. It's an invitation to step forward courageously and dare to dream. Not to put a limit or a cap on God, but actually say, God, what is your kingdom dream for Clovey? Here in the building, online, into the future, what is your dream for us? And we can trust you and move forward into that. Let's pray together. Will you stand with me? If you're in the room, if you're online, wherever you are, stand with me now. And Lord, we want to just invite your presence, Lord, in greater measure. We want to ask, Lord, that by your Holy Spirit, you'll speak to us. And give us the courage of Joshua. Lord, let us be a people who have the Bible as our foundation. Let us be a people, Lord, who fear you we throw away the gods and we choose to serve you. So I just want to give you an opportunity now just to respond to what the Lord is saying to you. What's he saying to you today? Engage with him now. Oh, we thank you that you're active, that you're dynamic, you're relational, that you're speaking Lord, to us now and just respond to him. He might be speaking very loudly or he might be just giving you a whisper. Just chase that down now and respond to him now. We want to bless you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We thank you for the plans that you have for us individually. We thank you for the plans that you have for us as a church. Lord, give us the courage to dare to dream, knowing that you are a faithful God, knowing that it's your mission, God, and you call us to it. So we trust you and we love you. And God's people said, amen, amen. We're going to respond to God in worship. Come on, church, let's sing together. For the battle belongs to Him, eh? As we step into our preferred future, the leading of our God, amen. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. How about every heart, every voice sing? Just one last time. With all the faith that you have and more, because God wants to add it to us right now as we sing this, as we step in to more of what He has for us, church. Let's sing it with conviction today. Let's sing it with confidence today. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. Yeah. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Come on. I'm going to see a victory, I'm going to see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. Well, I'm going to see a victory, I'm going to see a victory, so you, Jesus, the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the 
Uh, we bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. And we do praise you, Lord. And Lord, even if what you are depositing into us today, Lord, we are not sure or we go, how or why would you, Lord, continue to be so gracious and loving towards me that you would do that? Lord, we receive that. And Lord, we say thank you. And we bless you and we praise you, Lord, because all battles belong to you. You are the victorious one. And Lord, you will fill us with faith and you will move us forward. And we know that to be true, Lord, because you've done it before and you will do it again. So we bless you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Let's just put our hands together for the Lord. Let's bless Him. And it might be an act of faith that you put your hands together right now, but let's bless Him. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, because you are the faithful one. We bless you. Amen. Amen. Well, it has been so good to be with you today. So thanks for being with us. And it's great to have more and more people back in the building. Great to have you online with us and those that persevered with us through 9am as well. Thanks so much. So you can go out and grab a coffee. Make sure you kind of chat at that socially distanced kind of space. But the community is so important, right? So make sure you just linger and hang and chat a little bit as well. You can uh, see Luke out uh, at, the, uh, at the stool that he's got in the foyer there. And remember, Remember, our uh, registration for next week happens at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Go well and God bless. Also, if you could please give your communion cups to the crew on the doors on the way out, that'd be much appreciated. Thanks so much. Go well.